Good day there viewers and welcome to my 2019 Christmas special video. For those of you who don't know, my name is Cliff and I'm a recreational gem cutter from Southern Australia in Victoria. On behalf of myself and my family, I would like to wish all my subscribers and viewers a very Merry Christmas and of course a very healthy and safe new year in 2020. In this video there will be no demonstration of how to cut a gem at all and I apologize for that but it will be a bit of a mishmash of different subjects and topics about my journey in faceting during the year of 2019. So to start off with as you can see on the screen this particular gem was a gem I faceted earlier on in the year and I faceted it for a gem cutting competition so many of my subscribers have been asking about the results and I think this is the perfect video to show you the results for this particular free form gem. So I'm happy to say that I did win this particular competition and for privacy reasons I've covered part of my name and I received a score of 89.48 which is not bad but a lot of gem cutters still can cut higher but they're probably for some easier gems also so I did beat the two usual contenders that win this competition year after year so they will be trying to beat me next year so I also received a gold medal which you can see here which is combined with this particular plaque and I had my name etched on a trophy because it's a perpetual award and I think the aim is to try to keep your name on that trophy year after year if you can. I think that's not going to be attainable, but hey, it's worth a try. So moving right along, I submitted another gem in a different competition, but with the same faceting group, and I won a silver medal, second prize. And I have to admit, this particular gem, I couldn't even be bothered making a video on. It was dog ugly and I remember at the time my heart really wasn't into faceting this design so I'm pretty surprised that I even won anything to be quite honest and from now on I'm not going to be faceting any gems in competitions that I don't like the look of but with this particular gem you see now which is fluoride and it's called the John Blue variety I actually enjoyed faceting not only the material but the design so the whole point of this competition was to test the abilities of the faceter with a piece of rough material that most faceters usually would not facet. And I have to admit fluoride is not the nicest material to facet. It's very soft so it scratches easy, doesn't polish easily, it chips easily. So it has all these little issues. So normally gem cutters don't really want to facet fluoride. And from a jewellery point of view, people don't wear it because of the softness of this particular gem because it will chip if you hit it and scratch but with all the 10 participants most of the scores were very close from number one to number six so if you were in fourth fifth or sixth spot i only just beat those people by whisker so here is the third place certificate that i received and by the way there is no prize money involved in these competitions I go into these competitions mainly to find out how I'm going with faceting. Um, not that I do enter a lot of these competitions, but you get good feedback from the judges how you can improve things and they do let you know where you're doing really well. So in my case with this particular gem, there were a few little scratches and there are a couple of facets not so much the meet point but alignment of the facet so when you do the rotation of the gem all the alignments so the crown facets have to match pavilion facets stuff like that but you generally lose most of your points with meet points so really if you're short on a meet point you can lose a little bit so you get points deducted out of a hundred so 81.88 yeah not too bad because fluoride's not the easiest gem to cut so last but not least I won a bronze medal in the open section for a standard round brilliant which was the first gem I ever entered in a competition and I don't know how I even won something because I really didn't think this was a great gem at all. Um, I didn't really want to submit it but one of the gem club members said yeah just put it in the competition and see how you score. Score was okay but it was not great. 
So I've only ever entered into four competitions in my life and each time I've won something. I don't expect that trend to continue, but my main goal is with future competitions, I hope to get in the 90s out of 100. And if I could get a 95 out of 100 and consistently cut in the mid 90s or beyond that, uh, that would really make me happy because you're cutting at a very high level and the quality of the gem that you cut is a high quality gem. Sadly, maybe you can't use it for jewellery because the girdle is too thin, but nonetheless, it's a very well cut gem. Now, talking about gems for competitions, this particular gem I'm holding now is an absolute fail. I was cutting it earlier on today and I accidentally chose the wrong index. It can happen occasionally, even with the best of the best. And it goes to show you that um, mistakes can happen. I don't usually have many fails for competitions. So this is my first. And I have to admit, it is really annoying when this happens because you spend a lot of time cutting to get to the point where you get onto the polish and it's all become a big waste of time. So geriatric, if you can hear me out there, I know how it feels, mate. So what is my goal as a gem cutter in 2020? Now bear in mind, I don't cut commercially, I don't sell online, so I'm purely doing it just for the interest of a hobby as a recreational faceter because I enjoy faceting, I enjoy the art form and I find it really relaxing, you know, to sit at home at night and just sit around by myself and work things out when I'm faceting a gem. So I think this computer generated GIF that I've made up on Gem Cut Studio, which is software for designing gemstones, sums it up perfectly for me. I kind of want to be a faceter that facets with more flair, and the type of gems that I facet should have more flair at times. I think us Aussie gem cutters are very similar to the American and European gem cutters. It's all about meat point fastening, having perfect meat points and having a perfect finish. And that's really good because the quality of our stones are really good, but sometimes our ability to design and cut instinctively is not very good. And this is where South Americans and particularly Southeast Asians, they can grab a stone and follow the outline of the stone by cutting the facets along the shape of the stone. We don't do that. But the downside with that is that often when you're cutting for size, is that most of the gems tend to be very windowed and shallow. And I'd kind of like to have best of both worlds, increase the depth of the stone, have great scintillation, but have the ability to cut with that same flair that they have. And this particular gem you see at the moment that I've used in Gem Cut Studio has some of those attributes, I think. And by golly, it took me some time to get this design right. And talking about people from South America, I'd like to thank one of my subscribers who also cuts gemstones for sending me all these wonderful rough gems for me to facet. Uh, there's plenty here to keep me going for quite a while. And in point of fact, I'll be faceting the design that we previously saw out of one of these gems and hopefully I do a good job. So it's all about my ability to be able to facet this particular gem. And I'll drop in a link of the subscriber who sent this and you can have a look at some of the gems that they've been cutting on their channel. So there's the name of the YouTube channel if you wish to visit and have a look at some of the gemstones that have been faceted on that channel. In terms of gemstone quality that this person has sent, they are absolutely superb. Um, a lot better than what I've been buying from dealers overseas. And that will be what I'll be talking about next, particularly the quality and the cost of gems that I've bought out of the US. So here's a topic I haven't talked about this year and it's the price of gems and particularly the price of gems in the US and it kind of affects most people who live outside of the US because the way their currency is converted against a very strong greenback. 
but I will say this that the price of gems that I bought out of the US two years ago were a lot cheaper than they are now and with a host of US dealers that boast that they are the most honest and the most reputable within the business um, they are to a degree quite honest but of late the prices have become unaffordable for me but not only that the quality has deteriorated and I kind of suggest that if you're a dealer or you want to be a dealer maybe you should start faceting for quite a few years and then the next step is to go to an optometrist and get your eyes checked out because you really need to look at every individual stone carefully and check out whether it's got cracks and inclusions and the other thing with a lot of these dealers is that you are very rarely ever going to get many stones that cut around brilliant or round amazingly they all seem to be shapes that you don't really want to cut and it's maybe just coincidental but I don't think it is so here's an example of citrine that I bought in Australia Zambian citrine about 80 carats I paid $25 Australian probably about $20 US in the US you'd be paying about $100 US for the same amount and to me that's unaffordable it's not even realistic so I probably won't be buying out of the US for quite a while not with the prices the way they are so here I have several zircons three of them 23 carats and I paid $70 and they're Australian zircons so I'll be supporting Australian industries um, because they are cheaper um, the quality is probably better and it just seems to be a lot fairer and equitable for me at the moment so my favorite video production for 2019 was this one diamonds are not forever and it featured Jaws and we had a lot of fun doing a James Bond parody and incidentally Jaws is not at home at the moment for those people who watch my videos Jaws is my furry little friend and is currently on holiday at my in-laws but I'm going to see him on Christmas Day so my most favorite gem in 2019 would have to be my most recent and it goes back to the James Bond theme again and this is a design that I came up with called GoldenEye and it came out of my imagination and then I thought I'll just run it through Gem Cut Studio so I do have a fascination for these type of eye designs and it sort of harks back to the Pharaoh's eye trying to work that out so one of my goals also will be to create a lot more of my own designs and facet them throughout 2020. Also in 2020 I'll probably do a few more freeform designs taking the natural shape of the gem and working with what I've got within that gem and I think it would be really good because I don't have a lot of experience in doing that and although a lot of these gems are kind of not good for jewellery but from a faceting point of view it's really good to just get a little bit more creative with the art form also I'll be featuring gems that I've never faceted before for example Australian Moonstone which is quite a rare moonstone it's a light green colour hopefully I'll be faceting a bit of Montana Sapphire so I'd need to get hold of some of that I really do like the colour of that sapphire it's a lot different than our Aussie sapphire and last but not least I should do a live uh, podcast so if some of my subscribers would like to join me and chat to me I might be able to get that organized in 2020 so in closing I would like to thank all my subscribers and viewers for taking the time to watch all my videos during the year and thank you for all your kind comments I do read all my comments but you know there are so many comments sometimes you do miss them if you have something you would like to say then just go back into the comment section and retype it out and hopefully I get to see it also I'd like to thank all these people who've sent gemstones to me this year it really means a lot to me that people that I've never met before would be so kind to send me gems from their homeland 
and even from Australia, and it's given me the opportunity to cut gems that I possibly would never be able to cut in my life. So from the bottom of my heart, I thank all those people. So until next time everybody, my next video should be in 2020. Look after yourselves and take care of yourselves. It's bye for now.